Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome back to What the Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. So as you probably saw from the thumbnail, today we are doing another tier list. My last tier list was back in October when I ranked all of the movies in the Halloween franchise to celebrate the release of Halloween Ends, but today we are broadening our horizons, we are broadening the spectrum, and we are going to be tier ranking all of the horror franchises. 21 horror franchises. Because of course there are plenty of horror franchises that I either haven't watched or I've only watched a few of. So like Poltergeist, um, Leprechaun, I've only seen the first one of those. I've only seen the remake in the Hellraiser franchise and in the Exorcist franchise I've only seen one and three and there are some like The Purge where I just haven't seen any of the films at all. So that is not for me to comment on them or rank them. No, I have picked out 21 franchises where I have either seen all of the films or all of them bar one. But like I said that gives us 21 franchises to talk about and we are going to rank them in our tier list and the categories are as follows. So we have long live the franchise. This basically means these are the franchises that I love the most or I think are franchises that are really strong for ones that have gone on for so many years or had so many installments and are still doing a good job at it. Maybe might you know they might have one or two week installments but generally it's a strong franchise, it's one that I like and it's one that I would be happy to see continue. Then we have a scream. These are the franchises that I enjoy, that I think are strong and are good, but they're just not my particular personal favourites. Then we have Strong Opener, and what I mean by this is Strong Opener, weak ass franchise. Then we have Meh, those franchises that I'm happy to dip in and out of and have films in them that I enjoy, but as a franchise on the whole, eh. And then we have Time of Death, as in, let's call it Time of Death, let's stop making this franchise or let's stop watching this franchise. It's just no. Okay, so just a little disclaimer before we get started. I feel like I always have to say this. This is a reminder that this is my tier list ranking of horror franchises. This is not your tier list ranking of horror franchises. Although, you know, if you do have the same as me, great. Um, so yeah, it might look different to how you would place them, but let's just have fun and see where I place them. And let's be nice in the comments, okay? Because there's one in here that I'm particularly not nervous or worried about, but I'm well aware that people will not like where I place it. Okay, so first up we have Alien and this is Long Live the Franchise. I love the Alien franchise. I think that it is probably one of the strongest out there and I know that sometimes it does veer more into the action than the horror, but I think it has always maintained some horror elements. And I think you think about the opening one, and its sequel, one that is clearly a slasher formula, Aliens becomes more of an action one, but definitely still in the horror. Even the weaker instalments, like um, Alien 3, as frustrating as that is, there are strengths to it. And Alien Resurrection, I, I don't care what people say, I think that movie is a good time. If you just watch it, on its own, it's a good time. The newer instalments, Prometheus and, and Covenant, I know can be quite um, polarizing. I haven't actually seen Covenant. I have it, it's on my to watch shelf, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, again, I think, yes, it can be disappointing for those of people who are wanting alien movies. They don't quite get enough. And then there's those that are enjoying it just for the film it is, and it's mixed in with just enough to keep it in the alien franchise but there's definitely strengths in it. It's a beautiful looking movie and I think that David is a really fascinating character. But the Alien franchise gave us one of the greatest final girls and you know female characters or characters in movies in Ellen Ripley. I think that she's you know she's a badass, she's inspiring and um, yeah it's great. Although yeah I do get annoyed at Alien 3 for doing what they do in the opening because no. Bad movie. Bad bad movie. Okay, next up we have Child's Play and this is going in Long Live the Franchise as well. Mm, good opening. I feel like Child's Play is another really strong franchise. I don't love every movie in it particularly, but I think to say it's been going since the 80s and is still continuing now, we've just had season two of the TV series, 
I think that it's impressive to still be creating good installments, installments that feel like they're organic within the franchise, they belong there, and that is in large part thanks to Don Mancini being hands-on with this all the way through, apart from the reboot, obviously. This was his brainchild, and while he hasn't always had as much creative input as he does now with the TV series in the last few movies, um, it's always been his idea. It's always been, you know, at the heart and soul of it. Okay, next up we have The Evil Dead, and Evil Dead is a scream for me. It's a good one. I do love the movies, especially the reboot. I think The Evil Dead reboot could be, potentially, one of the best reboot slash remakes we've ever had in horror. I haven't seen An Army of Darkness yet. Again, it's on my to-watch shelf, but I will get around to that. But yeah, the first two incredible movies, especially when you think about what they created with the first one, with such a low budget, often goes that way, don't you find? That some of these films that are so iconic started out as low budget little indie films, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Saw, and who doesn't love Ash Williams? Okay, next we have one that, I don't know, might be controversial, maybe not, we'll see, but Final Destination is a scream for me and I'm not kidding this nearly went in long live the franchise because now hold me, hear me out hold up hear me out I do love the Final Destination movies <laughs> a lot of my favorite horror movies are ones that I love very passionately are ones that are some of the first few that I watched when I was younger you know a teenager getting into horror and Final Destination was you know among those it had that 90s early 2000s a slasher feel to it so I visited these movies a lot I loved the concept I loved that the concept was a potential X-Files episode which I love that series so I think they're fun I mean obviously there's a blip with the fourth one but yeah otherwise you've got four really strong entries and I'm so excited one of my subscribers very kindly reminded me when I did my um, most anticipated horror movies of 2023 that there is a new Final Destination so thank you very much for reminding me because I am so excited about that. Okay uh, next one oh, again this could annoy people Friday the 13th is meh for me I'm not the biggest Friday the 13th fan I love movies within it but yeah Jason's not my favourite killer and the Friday movies are not my favourite movies. I just feel like they're very much copy paste repeat but don't have scares within them to keep me interested and sometimes the characters don't keep me interested. It's at the point where some people's least favourite Friday films like the fifth one because you know spoiler Jason's not in it are actually ones I enjoy more because they go against the grain because they well do they do something different in that? It's just a little bit more wacky. I will say, Friday the 13th franchise has yet another incredible reboot. I think that film is really good. It kind of um, consolidates the first three or four movies within that one, and I think that that Jason's pretty damn scary. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> this one, Halloween, for me, is, it's a scream, okay? Calm down, call your boots. It's not long live the franchise, but it's a scream. And it would have, a few years ago, been just meh for me because I've never been the biggest Halloween fan. I appreciate it, but I've never been the biggest fan. But re-watching them over recent years for the new trilogy that we had, honestly, I have... Well, I actually mentioned it in my tier list ranking of the Halloween films that I have grown so much more love and appreciation for this franchise. This is one that I will visit more for just pure enjoyment. I do think as well it's, as a franchise, good. I think that to say it's been running from the 70s and to say there's been multiple restarts, multiple timelines, they've done an all right job of kind of keeping that essential feel of it whilst also evolving through the 80s and the 90s and into modern day. But if you want to know more of my thoughts on that, you can just watch the Halloween tier ranking, which I'll put somewhere here so you can check it out. Okay, next we have I Know What You Did Last Summer and this one, strong opener. Okay, now 
as I was saying earlier, some of my favourite horror films are ones that I cherish as some of the ones that I watched when I was younger, some of my earlier entry to horror movies. And I Know What He Did Last Summer is one of my favourite horror movies of all time. It's probably one of my most rewatched horror movies of all time. I adore it. I think the cast is absolutely fantastic. I think the soundtrack is great. I think the story is great. The setting, love the Fishertown setting. I think the look of the killer is more iconic than people maybe give it credit for. Plus it has the absolute queen Sarah Michelle Gellar in it, so gotta love that as well. Um, but this is ranking franchises, and as a franchise, this is not a strong one. Now, the franchise consists of the three films and the TV series, and whilst I enjoyed the TV series at the time, with hindsight, I think it's trash. And I think the third film is, uh, what's that one called? I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. Could possibly be one of the worst horror films I've ever seen. I will never rewatch that one. In fact, I didn't even finish it. Life is too short to sit through movies that you're not enjoying, and I didn't even finish that one. I couldn't. The second one I do quite like. I don't think it's a brilliant film, but you've got this really random cameo from um, Jack Black, and you also have. Oh my god, what's his name? The guy from Jeff Jeffrey Combs. Oh my god. So that's wonderful. Um, and I'm a sucker for nostalgia and those movies that look back on past events. So when you have the whole thing in the sequel where they're looking back on the characters that they lost in the first film, I really enjoy that. That plays into my sort of nostalgia enjoyment. So yeah, there's enjoyment to be had, but technically not a good film. So whilst it's one of my favorite horror movies, the franchise, it's just a strong opener and weak ass franchise. Okay, next we have Insidious, which I found so difficult to place, but I'm gonna put it in a scream because I'm quite new to the Insidious franchise. I watched it in 2020 for the first time, which surprised me because I absolutely adore the work of Lee Winnell and James Wan. Probably Lee Winnell more than James Wan. I know that's not um, a very common opinion, but I was quite late to these, watched them all, loved them, had to buy a copy of them, they're on my shelf, and I just thought that I would start to revisit them this year because we're getting the fifth one coming out, very exciting, and um, I didn't love this first one as much as I remember. I still think as a first watch it's really good when you don't know what's happening, when you don't know the twists, it's gripping, it's creepy, and I think that it's a good story. On a rewatch, when you do know everything, I didn't find it as scary. And I also found the flashing lights and the constant loud screeching noises really unpleasant. I often like to bung on a horror movie and have it in the background or just watch it as a comfort watch. You know, you just, you relaxed watching it. This is not one you can put on just for a comfy watch. But I do like the franchise. I like that even though they make certain decisions with certain characters, it doesn't prevent them from using them in later films. And I also think that some of the later films are stronger than the first one. And like I said, it's a dream team combination of Lee Winnell, James Wan and Patrick Wilson. So, okay, next up we have Jaws, which again, strong opener. Now Jaws is one of my favorite horror movies and favorite movies of all time. I love it to death, but again, ranking it as a franchise, this is a film that I don't personally think needs to be a franchise. I think the first film is a masterpiece. The story didn't need to continue, especially when the second one is pretty much copy, paste, repeat, just with more boats. The third one is, I mean, God knows what that was. It, and the fourth one, again, just, bizarre. I love the setting of Amity Island and, you know, Chief Brody, great character. So I do find enjoyment in the second one. I love that you're back in the same place. Um, I think it's, um, what's it called? Something vineyard. Anyway, it's that place that they film it. And, um, you know, some of the returning cast come in. So it does feel like it fits with the first one. But if I was going to choose to watch a Jaws film, I would watch the first one. I, I think I've only watched the fourth one once and not again, but you know, again, you know, credit to it, they do get some of the original cast back for certain roles, which again feels nice. It's just a shame that it's wasted in a film that I don't think people either watch or know exists. And the third one changes a lot of casting, changes the setting. You've 
you know you've got that um 3d obsession where everything's you know coming at the camera so yes didn't need to be a franchise. Then we have A Nightmare on Elm Street. And this one for me is a long live the franchise. This is again, in my opinion, because this is all my opinion, one of the strongest horror franchises. Again, like Child's Play, it's gone on from the 80s. Uh, okay, granted, we've not had an installment for quite a long time, but despite Freddy's Dead being a pretty weak ass movie, this is a really good franchise. I mean, your Freddy does go through an evolution through the films, granted, and if you're someone who prefers, you know, goofy Freddy, or scary Freddy, you might not necessarily enjoy his journey through all of them, especially when you get towards um, Dream Masters and Dream Child, you know, it's very much the MTV flashy 80s version of Freddy, but I think that the first three are incredible, and I I do like the fourth one, I have to say, because I love um, Dream Warriors. I like watching the first part of um, Nightmare on Elm Street 4. I'll watch three and then I'll watch the first part because I love Joey and Kincaid. I think that they're brilliant and I just watch it for the first part. I haven't seen the remake and I'm not going to see the remake, I don't think, because I know the direction that they go in it. I This is nothing to do with it not being... Um, Robert uh, England playing Freddy Krueger. I've heard that, is it Haley Joel or something like that? I don't know. I've heard that he does a pretty good job. It's more that I know, it's kind of copy paste repeat of the original, but not in the same way, it doesn't have the same magic. And they go in a particular direction with Freddy and I just don't, I don't want to watch that. I know things have been implied, but I think it's better to just have it implied than outright, you know, saying these things. So yeah, I don't personally want to watch the remake, but the others I enjoy. Okay, next up we have Paranormal Activity and I know not many people will agree me, agree with me on this one, but hey, this is my list. I'm putting it in a scream. Now, I know that I have accused other franchises of being copy, paste, repeat and Paranormal Activity is one of the main offenders for this, let's be honest. And what, six films in? How many more ideas can they come up with to make people have a camera pointing at a doorway with creepy things happening? But Paranormal Activity is one of those films that scared the living daylights out of me when I first watched it. And even on a rewatch, even when I know what's going to happen, it still unnerves me, it still creeps me out, still makes me jump. I think it's one of those, like I mentioned earlier, low budget first entry, but just really did something special. I can understand it not being for everybody, but I do enjoy it. And I also enjoy the other films. Um, even the new one had an enjoyment level to it, apart from the ridiculous decisions made by these characters, because that place was not their home. They weren't trapped there. They could have left at any point, but instead of which they decide to climb down the pit of doom and death. But anyway, I do enjoy the other films. Even the fourth one, it's a little bit boring, but that one's a really good comfort watch. That's a really good one to have on in the background. And I really like the third one because it goes back in time. Well, not time traveling, but it's a prequel. And so they have to work around the technology of the 80s. And I think that they do a good job. The ghost I mentioned though, when you start getting into all the black goo, they have this camera that they find that can see paranormal entities and activities. Um, and when you start seeing Toby as this black goo, especially when he's this big hand, I think that that loses so much of the scare factor. So I'm not a fan of that. Look, I'm not saying these are perfect, okay? When I place them in a scream, I'm not saying they're perfect, but I enjoy paranormal activity. Okay, next up we have Psycho, and that again is a scream. Now, maybe some of you aren't aware that Psycho is actually a franchise, but there is the original Alfred Hitchcock one, and then there are three sequels, and then there is the remake that was in 1999. Is it Gus Van Sant? So, Psycho, one of my favourite movies of all time, it's in my top five. I adore Alfred Hitchcock and I adore Psycho. I think it's one of my most rewatched movies um but as a franchise it's also pretty good psycho 2 which was done in the 80s is one of my favorite horror sequels ever honestly if you haven't seen it and you like psycho i would still recommend it and say it's not going to take anything away from the original it's so so good it's 
um, it's more heavy on the gore or the kills I would say. It's now in colour but Anthony Perkins returns as Norman Bates um, after he's been released and he's you know trying to build a life for himself. Such a strong sequel and the third and the fourth one. I think the fourth one is the one that is directed by Anthony Perkins. He stars in all four of them and it's all set at the Bates Motel and to say you've got four films with Norman Bates and at the motel, each one feels different. Each one feels like it has a reason to exist. To have a franchise where your worst entry is still better than some other franchise's best entries, I think that's really saying something. The remake I have seen, um, and it's a funny one, isn't it? There's no reason for this to exist. The guy, the director, has admitted, look, I love this movie. I just wanted to remake it and see if I could. And he could. He just, he remade it, a film that he loves. And so you can't say that the film is a bad film because it's an exact copy of the original and the original is a masterpiece. But it just doesn't really need to be because it is almost shot for shot. However, just thinking out loud here, if you're someone who doesn't enjoy or feels like they can't watch um, black and white films, the remake is in colour and more modernised. So perhaps that would allow you to be introduced to this film that you wouldn't otherwise watch. So maybe it does have a purpose. Okay. <sighs> mm, okay, so this next one, I'm still not decided as I'm doing this right now, I'm deciding where it's going, but I'm gonna put it in Long Live the Franchise, and that's Saw. But that's Saw in Long Live the Franchise, question mark? Look, Saw is another film that I adore. Like I said earlier, I love Lee Winnell and James Wan, and I love the first Saw. I think it's an incredible story, and it would work so well as a standalone. But they decided to make sequels. They decided to make it into a franchise. And while James Wan and Lee Winnell only had something to do with the first three, and James Wan, I think, only the first two, Winnell wrote the first three, it has been a family affair. It has had a team of people who have been involved in it. And when one director leaves, someone else comes up from another department to direct it and will return to direct it. It's very rare that you have a film entry in this franchise, which is just completely from scratch. Even the remake um, or reboot, Spiral, had a returning uh, members of the old team. I think the only one that is genuinely just standalone with all new people is uh, Jigsaw, which I haven't seen because I've got no, not intention, no desire to, no desire to see it. I did watch Spiral and I quite liked it. Um, but yeah, I just, the reason why it's up there is because even though it is copy, paste, repeat, each one you have a cut plot and you have a trap plot. So you have people who are trapped in plots. Um, no, not trapped in plots, trapped in traps. <laughs> you have people trapped in traps who, that's what most people come for. That's the gore, that's the, the you know, the carnage. And uh, then you also have the other side where they're trying to figure out who Jigsaw is or who the Jigsaw copycat is. Um, and it's convoluted, it's ridiculous but it's dedication and that's what I love. Now this is kind of doing what Marvel, so I was doing years ago what Marvel's doing now, where you have to see every film for it to make sense. They will have little Easter eggs looking back at previous films. They'll have things happening in films that don't make any sense until later in other films, sometimes two films later. So you have to be in this, you can stop, but if, you know, you can't just dip in at six if you've missed three and four. So I kind of love that. I kind of love the dedication to making this universe, making this experience that if you watch it all the way through, things do pay off. And I don't know, there's not many franchises that do it. There's not many horror franchises that do it. And look, they're not all great, but I mean, like even the last one, Saw 3D or Final Chapter, whatever it was, that film, not great. But that end scene where we go back to a familiar scene from earlier in the franchise, I would watch it again just for that scene. I'm interested to see what they do this year with Saw 10. Okay, we have Scream. And let's say it all together. Long live the franchise. If you know me, if you've been around here for anything more than a minute, you know that Scream is my favourite horror film of all time, my favourite film of all time, and my favourite franchise of all time. I freaking love this movie. So of course it's in Long Live the Franchise. Not just because it's my personal favourite. This, I think, with Alien, is the one that belongs in this 
tier the most because as a franchise, it is so consistent in quality. The weakest entry in a lot of people's opinion is the third one or the fourth one, but both of them are still good movies. Both of them feel like they belong in the franchise. They develop the story further. They're respectful to the characters and they're always trying something new, as in doing something new. They're always commenting on the next thing because Scream has always been meta. So it's always dealing with a different aspect of the horror world, which is exciting. And Scream is one of the only horror franchises where you have a whodunit element. It's also an interesting um, element to Scream because of how you're developing relationships and connections to these characters. You're watching them and you're forming bonds with them. You pick your favourites, you pick ones you don't like, ones you want to survive, yet all the while knowing that you don't know which one of them could be the bad guy, could be the villain. So you could pick one as your favourite and then, you know, have the rug pulled out from under you. So it's such a unique franchise. Okay, next we have Sleepaway Camp and this is a strong opener. I love Sleepaway Camp. I watched it for the first time last year and I absolutely love that movie. It's just balls to the wall, bizarre, and I adore it. But the problem is the first film is really good, as in it's so bad it's good. Like it's not a technically good film, but it's a hell of a good time. But the other movies, not so good. The quality gets less and less with each installment and they do actually change the actress who plays Angela Oh, I can't remember her name, but it's um, Bruce Springsteen's sister who takes over in the role. She does a good job. It's a different interpretation, but I just, I'm not going to revisit the sequels, but I will happily rewatch Sleepaway Camp. Okay, next we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, and this is a scream for me. Again, I'm, I sound like I'm a record on repeat, but I love the first one. I really do love Texas Chainsaw Massacre but the franchise is not perfect. Um, I think the second one is good and I think that this also has a really strong remake. I actually, this was one of the films where I watched the remake first and I think that it is terrifying. I think that that has the scariest leather face. I think that it's dirty and grimy and was really shocking for horror audiences because this was the year before Saw came out. So we hadn't had the Saw Hostel kind of movies yet. The beginning, is okay. I didn't love the latest one, but it's gorgeously shot. And uh, three and four, dear lord. I mean, I mean, the best thing about the fourth one is Matthew McConaughey chewing the scene and making these random ass sounds all over the place. But come on, what are those two movies? Next, we have the Blair Witch Project, and this for me is meh. Look. The first one, it did what it did. It opened the door again for found footage films and has its scary elements to it. That end scene, I'm not gonna deny, is not the most terrifying thing, but it's, you know, it's unsettling. I think it's one of those where you go, ooh, I don't like that. There's something just strange about it. As a franchise, you know, the first one's good. The second one, what? And the third one, I find enjoyment in it. I don't mind the third one. I have actually watched that a couple of times. That's a good one just to bung on and half pay attention to. And you've got the modernization of the technology with the drones in it. Okay, this next one, hmm, some people might disagree with because I know people are kind of sick to death with this franchise. Not me though. The Conjuring. Long live the franchise. I know. Now, when I consider the Conjuring franchise, I mostly think of the Conjuring movies and I love those films. If you've been following me uh, through last year, you'll know that I did the Truly Horror series on The Conjuring 1, 2 and 3. Um, I will leave, the link, leave a link here or in the description box if you want to check those out. I had so much fun doing them, really interesting. So I love The Conjuring movies. I really enjoy the Annabelle movies. I don't mind The Nun, you know, it's not my favourite. Uh, La Llorona is okay. You know, again, I think the problem is that when it's good, it's insanely good. And when it's bad, it's just kind of mediocre. It's just kind of a half effort entry, but they're not the worst. And so as a franchise, it's still going. It still gets the numbers in, it still gets the audience in. It's still linking things back. I mean, this year we're getting The Nun 2. We're also supposedly getting The Crooked Man. So there's still ideas there. They interlink. It's a universe that they have successfully built. 
I know it's not for everyone. I know not everyone finds it scary. Um, and it is questionable about it making its heroes, um, its, you know, protagonists, the Warrens. And there's a lot of weird stuff around the Warrens. But you cannot say that Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson as Ed and Lorraine Warren aren't just... Oh, they're just... Oh. But this is what I mean. It's like... They're the Warrens. I don't love the Warrens. Okay, next we have the ring or the ring you franchise and this for me is a scream again this is a huge franchise probably the biggest franchise on this list and i did an episode which was ring you versus the ring and the real horror behind it and in that i list everything that's in this franchise this uh, again <laughs> i feel like i'm saying the same thing but the first ring you one of my favorite horror movies ever and it took me a long time to admit that because i think if you've heard the story before, I do apologise, but Ring You is the film that scared me the most in my life to the point that it scarred me. I was traumatised by that film for years. I couldn't walk past it, you know, the DVD box <laughs> in the shop and I was terrified. I went home, we still had VHS tapes that were unlabeled and they were terrifying and I wouldn't put an unlabeled one in the machine without my mum checking it first just in case it was the curse, you know, like... <laughs> every man for himself there you go mum you watch the curse i just couldn't watch it for the longest longest time um but then you know i've rewatched it over the years i did revisit it and i tried the american ones and i've come to realize that i'm so grateful that it gave me such an incredible horror experience it really was a scare that i've never felt since very few horror movies actually scare me the mostly paranormal ghostly ones so i'm grateful for that experience i love the story i love the lore behind it and i think for an asian horror translating over to america the remake really really good really strong i do enjoy that as well i think it's beautiful with its you know blue tones i prefer the original because it was what i watched first and is what i connected to with it terrifying me i don't find the american one as scary um at all but i do i've seen the american one its sequel and rings which you know it still has its enjoyment in it and i've seen um the sequels to the japanese one and i saw the crossover with sadako and Kayako who's from the Zhuon series so yeah I just Sadako or Samara is one of the most iconic horror villains in my eyes I think she's so creepy and I think that to be in two you know east and west versions still be quite strong it's a good enjoyable franchise okay next we have Tremors <laughs> a random month on here but Tremors is going in strong opener because the first Tremors is amazing it's so good. Have you seen it? You should see it. It just, oh, it's just oh, 90s creature feature brilliance with Kevin Bacon in the lead role. They're in this desert town, which is another setting I love after sort of uh, lakeside, seaside fishing uh, villages. It's really good fun. They're not all as strong. Like the second one's pretty good. It's all right. I mean, it's not a brilliant film, but it's all right. It's fun. Um, and then, yeah, the third one's not so great. The fourth one's better than the third and so on and so on. I think it's the, is it the fifth and the sixth one? Actually has Jamie Kennedy in it, who's Randy from Scream. So that's kind of fun watching. First one, strong opener, highly recommend it. We cast franchise. And finally, ugh, what a one to end on. Ugh. Look, I know some people love this one, but wrong turn for me is going in time of death, call it. This franchise is one of the grossest ugh, franchises that is out there. I, look, the first one, I do actually quite like. And the remake, I didn't hear. I, I don't understand why people were like, oh, it's the worst thing ever. Maybe it's because they're diehard Wong Turn fans. I would be the same if it was a franchise I loved, so fair enough. But for me, who enjoyed the first one, doesn't like the franchise, I thought it was, uh, it was pretty good. You know, plenty of creative gore there, beautifully set, but oh my God, this franchise. I mean, just some of these entries, are so mean, so nasty, what they do to certain characters, what they say to them. <sighs> yeah, time of death, call it. No more wrong turn. See ya. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. My tier list ranking of horror franchises are of the ones I have seen and completed, at least. Um, what I'm thinking, though, if you guys do enjoy this one, I might do another tier list ranking of horror franchises maybe next year. 
um, or later this year or whenever I get to the point where I have completed more franchises. So like I said, like The Exorcist, I've seen a couple. I just need to see a few more. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. Also, let me know down below where you would rank some franchises. Maybe even tell me ones that are not included in this, but just ones that you would put in Long Live the Franchise and ones you would put in Time of Death. This was quite hard to do because I'm not ranking individual films, I'm ranking it as a franchise as a whole, how successful it is, how much it feels like a cohesive franchise, how long it's been running, how much enjoyment there is in it. So it was quite difficult but quite fun as well, you know, rather than just going, this film's better than this film. Um, it really made me think about where do these franchises actually sit because honestly the strong opener was so surprising to me because <laughs> some of these are my favorite horror films films that i absolutely love but you know we're not they don't work well as a franchise Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode um, another tier list. Let me know any ideas or requests down below if you have any tier list you would like me to see or like me to do. Okay, so as far as next week's episode, I do know what it's hopefully going to be. I am working on something and it's something I've not done before, so I'm hoping you guys will like it. I won't say yet just in case I have to postpone it, but make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And like I said, I will leave links below to uh, playlists for some of the ones that I've mentioned. So if any of those sound interesting, you want more in-depth thoughts on these films, it's always a fleeting glance, isn't it, in tier lists, then you can go check those out as well. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs>